Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Evan with PodPeak and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to split a stereo audio track into two separate mono files or what's called dual mono in Reaper. And then I'm also gonna show you a couple of custom actions to really speed up that workflow and uh, be able to do it really fast. Let's dive in. Welcome to PodPeak, where I talk about recording, editing, and sound design for music production, podcasts, and film. Hey, if you're new to this channel, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure and turn on those notifications so you get updates each time I put out a new video. So today's video is going to be helpful to podcasters, music producers, and more. Let's talk about podcasting for a minute. So if you're interviewing someone using, say, a Zoom recorder or a remote application like Zoom or CleanFeed, oftentimes the file you download at the end is going to be a stereo file. For example, your audio as the interviewer might be hard panned to the left, and your subject's audio, the person you're interviewing, their audio will be hard panned to the right. Ideally, you're going to want both audio files to be panned to the center, and that's where splitting the track into two mono files will be super useful. Now let's talk about music production for a minute. Let's say you're a mixing engineer and your client sends you all the files. You might have some drum tracks or electric guitars delivered as a stereo file. Well, splitting those up into two separate mono files will give you more options as far as panning, mixing, etc. So let's go over how to achieve this. All right, here we are in a blank Reaper session. I'm gonna import the stereo audio file that I wanna work with. In this case, it's an interview I recorded using CleanFeed. As you can see, it's a stereo file. In this case, my audio is on the left and my subject's audio is on the right. I wanna split this track into two separate mono tracks so I can pan both of the tracks in the center as well as have the ability to clean up each track independently. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate the track. You can do this by going to track and choosing duplicate track, or you can right click the track and again choose duplicate track. Next, I'm going to name the tracks. The first track will be my audio, so I'll name it Evan. And the second track will be my interviewee, in this case, Rick. So I'll name this track Rick. So I will go to my track, select the item, and then I'm gonna right click and choose item settings. Next, I'm gonna to navigate to the take channel modes. Since I wanna turn my audio, the left side of the stereo track into its own mono file, I'm gonna choose take channel mode mono left. As you can see, the audio file is now a mono file panned to the center. Now let's go to the next track. Select the item, choose item settings and choose Take channel mode, mono right. As you can see, the audio file is now a mono file panned to the center. Now I can edit the track separately, pan them whichever way I choose, or add independent effects to each track. Very helpful in the realm of podcast editing. So let's go through this one more time. This time working with a stereo audio file of some drum overheads. I'm going to import the file, and just like before, I'm going to duplicate the track. Next, I'll name the first track Overhead Left. And the second track Overhead Right. I'll go back to the first track, select the item, right click, and choose Item Settings. And since I want to turn the left side of this stereo file into its own mono file, I will choose Take Channel Mode, Mono Left. Now let's go to the next track, select the item, choose item settings, and then choose take channel mode, mono right. As you can see, the audio file is now a mono file, panned to the center, and I can now pan these tracks at different degrees or add independent effects to each track. So that's how you split a stereo audio file into two mono tracks in Reaper. But there's one issue. There's a lot of steps to make all that happen. And so as I promised in the beginning of the video, I'm gonna show you a couple of shortcuts, AKA custom actions, to make this happen a lot quicker and efficiently. Let's check it out. 
So here we are in a new Reaper session, and as you can see, this is my customized setup that I've created by creating my own custom toolbars. And to learn how I did that, you can check out this video right here. And also, if you want to follow along and create the custom actions that I'm about to show you, you're going to need to make sure and have the SWS extensions uh, loaded onto your computer and installed in Reaper, and uh, I will leave a link to that down in the notes below. Okay, so back in the Reaper session, I'm going to import that same stereo file from earlier in this video. But rather than going through all the separate steps I showed you before, I'm going to initiate a custom action I've created, and boom, I've got two separate mono files, just like that. And obviously, uh, this saved me a lot of time. Now, when I open my mixer, you can see that in my custom action, I've chosen to keep the tracks individually panned hard left and hard right. And that's because I often work with stereo files that I'd like to keep panned, like drum overheads or electric guitars. But that's okay because I have another custom action I can initiate, which will pan any track I have selected to the center, like this. So let's take a look at both of these custom actions. Here's the first custom action I've made to split stereo tracks into dual mono. It's called Split to Mono, and here's all the actions that I've used to create it. So let's initiate this custom action again. I'm going to import my track, choose the custom action split to mono, and here we are. But the only issue with this custom action is that I still have to name the tracks, which is tedious and time consuming. So let's add a new action to this custom action that I've made that will automatically prompt us to name the tracks. Let's open up the actions list, and in the filter, type in the custom action, which for me is split to mono. Now I'll choose edit action. At the end of the custom action, I'm going to add a new action. In the filter, I'll type rename, and I'm going to choose rename selected tracks. I'll drag this over to the bottom of my custom action list and choose OK. Now, when I import the file again and initiate the custom action, it automatically prompts me to name each track. Pretty cool. And finally, let me show you a custom action that I use to center all the panning for tracks that I have selected. Open up the actions list, and in the filter, I'm going to type in my custom action, which is called Pan Selected Tracks to Center. Here's the actions you need to use for this custom action. All right, well, that's it for today's video. If you found value in the tricks I showed you, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, make sure and turn on notifications so you get updates each time I put out a new video. All right, that's it for today. Peace out, everyone, and we will catch you next time.